Um, hello everybody, my name is Jonas Amling and today I would like to talk about attention-based uh, multiple instance learning for survival prediction on lung cancer tissue microarrays. And if you take a look at the title slide, you can see um, a typical um, tissue core from such a tissue microarray. And um, if you take a closer look at this um, H&E stained tissue, then you might have noticed something out of the ordinary here in this area where you see those black spots. And um, these black spots, those are caused by um, an accumulation of carbon in the lungs, which is uh, due to repeated exposure to air pollution um, or inhalation of smoke or dust particles. And some studies have shown that there is an association between um, these black spots and the development of lung cancer. And that already shows that there might be something else in the image besides cell morphology or tissue architecture that is related to survival prediction. And I would like to start my talk with a brief description of these tissue microarrays. You already saw a normal tissue core. This is what a tissue microarray slide looks like. And you can see that this particular slide has tissue cores with a size of about 0.6 millimeters in diameter. And depending on the size of the um, tissue core, uh, you can have different um, amounts of tissue cores on a slide. And on this particular slide, we have room for 420 tissue cores. And typically, three uh, cores per patient are placed together on, on, on such a slide. And this particular slide uh, looks a bit different compared to the previous core that I showed you, because this slide is stained with a um, special anti uh, with a special um, marker that is um, uh, a marker for active cell proliferation and indicates tumor growth. And for comparison, here's a normal biopsy sample from, from a dog cancer, which is about 20 to 25 millimeters in diameter, which is about 30 to 40 times larger than a tissue core on the tissue microarray slide. So there's only one patient with a lot of tissue here on the right, whereas there are many patients with only little amount of tissue on the left. And that leads to some special characteristics of these two different slides. So having um, tissue from multiple patients on the same slide allows for the si simultaneous analysis of hundreds of tissue samples at the same time, which of course not only saves time, but also reagents for staining and um, resources compared to analyzing um, all these individual samples um, separately. And having all of these tissue cores on the same slide also facilitates standardization um, since we can keep the uh, staining and imaging conditions um, consistent across multiple samples. And that reduces variability and enhances the reliability of the results. However, there are also uh, some disadvantages and for example, these tissue microarrays rely on small tissue cores that are taken from the original tissue sample. And this sampling technique may introduce potential biases and limits the representation of the um, heterogeneity of the, of the original sample. So that some important information and some of the architectural context of the, of, of the sample might, might be lost. 
And sometimes when you take multiple cuts from, from the same tissue microarray block, um, there can also be some lost information involved. And we will see an example on the, of this on, on, on the next slide. And recently, a handful of methods um, were proposed that use these whole slide images for survival prediction. However, we were interested whether these methods also, whether these methods are also applicable um, on tissue microarrays, which offer a lot less tissue information per patient. And in order to do so, we uh, created a data set that consisted of at most three cuts from three different uh, tissue microarray slides, where there are three cores per patient on each slide. And there was also some loss of tissue and missing information involved. And an example is shown here. So here we can see two cuts from the same area of a tissue microarray. And here we can see that in a different cut, we lost some information here in this particular area. So in total, uh, our data set included tissue cores from uh, 330 patients with um, 2,026 tissue cores in total. And in addition, we also had some clinical factors available such as age, sex, the smoking status, the grade, and the stage of, of the patient. And those uh, latter factors are known to be highly prognostically relevant for survival prediction. And in order to work with the data, we manually annotated the tissue cores such that we can associate the image information with the patient information. And in order to simplify the handling of the image information, we created patient-specific um, images that contain only tissue cores from a single patient. And we will see an example on the, on the next slide. So here is an overview of our um, attention-based multiple instance learning uh, framework. Here on the left, we can see those patient-specific images. Those now only contain tissue cores from the same patient. And in order to prepare the data for training, we first performed um, tissue segmentation in order to separate the tissue from the background. And then in order to process this entire image, we performed sampling of non-overlapping patches of size 256 by 256, which would fit on a normal GPU. And then we used the frozen ResNet50 feature extractor to extract the features from, from all these patches from the entire image and save them so we can use them for efficient training of our method. And then the AML module is trained to combine the information from all of the patches from an entire image. Um, is trained to combine the information um, from all of these patches together in order to perform um, survival prediction. And the output of the model is then a, a risk score, which is used by a modified Cox partial likelihood um, to train the network. And in order to test our method, we made some comparisons where our aim was to investigate whether the information from a tissue microarray is sufficient to achieve similar or better performance than established survival prediction methods, which are based on those um, yeah, clinical factors mentioned in the beginning, such as the staging and the grading, age and sex. And for our comparisons, we 
implemented a standard go-to method, the Cox proportional hazard model. And we also compared our method to, uh, yeah, to an extension of the, random, of the random forest for survival prediction. And we also compared our method to the um, deep surf method, which is a deep learning based um, survival prediction method that also uses tabular data. And for the image based methods, we uh, compared to a classical multiple instance learning method that is based on the max pooling operator. Then we show the results for our attention based method. And in addition, we also trained another attention-based uh, learning method that uh, instead of using the entire uh, patient-specific images, only uh, used the tissue cores separately. And, um, <clears throat> and we did this in order to, yeah, in, in order to evaluate whether the information in a single tissue core is yeah, representative of the, of the patient um, level label. And in order to evaluate the methods, we set up uh, a tenfold Monte Carlo cross-validation where we measured the Harold's C index, which is, um, yeah, a, a a measure that measures the discriminatory power of the model um, to correctly rank the survival times based on, on the risk scores. And we also compared the patient stratification results with Kaplan-Meier curves. So we used the risk scores from our methods to divide the patients into high and low risk groups and then use the Kaplan-Meier curves for comparisons. And finally, we computed the uh, Cohen's Kappa score um, to compare the um, agreement between the methods, the tabular-based and image-based methods. So here are the results for the C-index performance. Overall, we can see that the classical Cox model had the best mean performance However, we can also see that our attention-based um, multiple instance learning methods um, performed similarly well. In fact, the median performance is slightly higher compared to the Cox model or the random survival forest, which indicates that the method is slightly more robust in our experiments. Um, the deep surf method performed worst in our comparisons and the single core evaluation method showed a slight decrease in performance which indicates that the, that the patient level information is not equally represented by all tissue cores. Here are the results for the patient stratification where we can see that all methods were able to perform um, successful patient stratification indicated by um, statistically significant log rank test results, except for the deep surf method, which was not able to perform statistically different um, um, patient stratification. However, this was also the method that performed worst in terms of C-index. And the evaluation of the Kappa score interestingly showed that we observe higher agreement within the two types of methods. So we have a higher agreement within the image-based methods and we also have high agreement within the tabular-based methods. However, there is only little um, agreement between those methods. And this result suggests that, there, that the combination of the two approaches might provide additional benefits. So, in summary, uh, we were able to show that our attention-based method performed similarly well 
uh, in comparison to established survival prediction methods, such as the Cox proportional hazard model or the random survival forest, and that only the very little amount of tissue from a tissue microarray is already sufficient for patient stratification compared to using highly prognostic variables such as grading and staging. And the de decrease in our uh, performance from the single core evaluation method suggests that there is high heterogeneity between the tissue cores. And so all available tissue cores should be used. And we observed some disagreement between the tabular and image-based methods, which indicates that there might be some additional benefits uh, when using uh, multimodal approaches. And that concludes my talk. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to answer all your questions. <laughs>